Greetings and welcome to The Magnolia, the show that is dedicated to image, brand, and business culture. I'm Nida Bittman Neville, your host. I'm an image and brand doctor, and so I listen to my clients, find out what their ailments are, if you will, and then prescribe a marketing communication plan that will help them to enhance the health of their overall image and brand. Now, what I've been doing is working on all of my social networks, and I decided that I wanted to share with you today some techniques to help you avoid sabotaging your online personal brand. Because online marketing and your personal branding has become quite important in this day and age. Most everyone is getting into the swing of things, if you will, and joining the online social networks. But there's a few things we really need to consider. And I want to share with you five uh, techniques, if you will. The first one is, if you are out there on the social network, what you need to do is Google your name, your company name, at least twice a month, if not more. Just depends upon how often you actually are appearing in the world of the social networking. But Google yourself to find out what is being said by you. Why bother? Because you know, a personal brand, we all have that personal brand, and the online world of personal branding is caused by two things. One is the information that you place in your online profiles, and the second is what is being said about you. And so we really want to try to manage, if you will, that online personal branding. Now another reason, particularly if you are looking to find a job, for, for example, 64% uh, of human resource managers, it recently said in a Microsoft study, are, feel that it is appropriate to view online networks and profiles of their potential candidates for jobs. 41% of those same HR managers actually find that they reject applicants because of things they found online. So it's very important that you really think about how are you going to position yourself? What is going to be the message? How are you going to describe yourself on these social networks? And we don't want to spread ourselves so thin that we really are very ineffective. No, what we want to do, the second thing I want to talk to you about, is that we really want to spread ourselves very adequately like a wonderful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. What I mean by that is, when I'm working with my clients, I tell them, let's get started with the social networks, and let's get started with the major ones. LinkedIn, of course, is more business focused, as we all know, but most everything. Facebook is becoming both personal and business. You have MySpace, maybe you want to, to tweet, and so you want to place yourself out there on Twitter as well. Those are our major social networks. Now, in today's world, you have got a multitude of various social networks. But just like anything else, if you spread yourself so thin, you're not going to have the opportunity to actually manage those online networks. They're just another marketing tool for yourself and for your business. So we have to make sure that we're not spreading ourselves so thin that we don't have time to tweet, that we don't have time to post, that we don't have time to make sure that our our headshots, our profiles are up date and they're relevant and they're changing and they're interesting. So that's the second thing I want you to think about. The third thing is think about who you are inviting to join your networks. For example, you know, when you get started with social networking, what we find is that, you know, at first you go for all the friends and the family and you create your little social network because it's really enjoyable to see all the connections that you can make. But then you begin to add to that same group possible colleagues, maybe even a manager or two, a former manager. Well, at that point, I would suggest that you step back and make a strategic decision on, wait a minute, you know, because if somebody says something inappropriate or somebody brings up something that we did years ago or last Saturday night, it may cause you problems in the work arena. So what you may want to do is have that 
profile, if you will, and have that to be for friends and family, and then create yourself um, on Facebook, you can create yourself a fan page, and you can use that for more of your professional world. So really think about what the impact might be as you, if you want to continue to combine uh, those personal relationships with those business relationships. And fourth, you know, I want you to think about what you're actually, what your content is, what you're actually saying out online on your social networks. What you don't want to do is fill it with me, 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 everything about me. I've done this. I do this. I did this last week. Because pretty soon people are going to start to think, my gosh, I'm so sick of hearing about what they're doing. You know, they never say anything about what their friends are doing or what their company's doing. So think about ways that you can promote and compliment others in addition to what you might say as far as self-promotion. Maybe you visited a restaurant last week and you had great service and great food. Share that. Maybe there is a business technique that you have found about becoming better organized and you want to share that. While that's still a little bit of self-promotion, you're really sharing something that you are hoping that, that others will benefit from just like you did. So again, that fourth thing is helping to promote and compliment others and not doing totally the me, 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 me world. And last, and the fifth thing is, as you consider your presence and your positioning in the world of social networks, be consistent. For those of you who have known me uh, and, and who know and watch the Magnolia on an ongoing basis, know that I talk about consistency a lot because that is truly how you build a personal or a business brand. It's that continuous consistency. So make sure that you're using some consistent photographs, that you are using a consistent message across all of your social networks, and then what you want to do is you want to carry that to your website, to blogs, to, the, to any presentations that you're doing, to then all of your marketing materials at the company, at the company level, at just every way that you, quote, package that personal branding, you want to create consistency. That's how we build our reputation. And what we want is that, that you want, I am sure, a very positive and professional image and brand. So again, I hope that these techniques will help you to avoid sabotaging your online personal brand. And so if we think about it, if we you know, look at the way that we are being branded. Again, Google yourself. If second, you really spread yourself in a fashion that you can manage your online personal brand like a good spread on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Third, think about the way, the who that you rather, who are you going to be adding to your site? Making sure that you're adding individuals who complement that group and not necessarily merging that personal and business world. Fourth, you want to think about promoting and complimenting others or sharing information that is relevant to others that will actually help them and not so much about me, me, me. And last, create consistency so that you will build a strong image and brand, not only online, but offline as well. You've been listening and watching The Magnolia, the show that is dedicated to image, brand, and business culture. Heard every Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, we shoot a new show. And so I hope that you will watch whatever is the new show. And also you can check out all of the archive shows by simply going to www.themagnolia.tv. I appreciate you joining me today. Now, I've got to get back to some social networking and make sure all of my sites are up to date. Oh yes, and look for my tweet as well. Make sure